Hi, Newt and friends. Welcome back to another Mushy and Newt vlog. If you're new to this channel, my name is Mushy, and I come around this channel with my lifelong best friend, Newt. Newt and I are both artists who love to create things. We love creating polymer clay figures. We love doing all kinds of art. Our full-time jobs aren't really art-related, and eventually we'd like to do our art full-time. And we've created this channel to show our journey trying to get there to go full-time with our small art businesses. This week I created a kawaii panda bear charm. I really wanted to create a panda bear because I've been watching all of the kung fu panda movies lately. My husband and I have been watching through all of them and we just saw the fourth one that just came out. And I wanted to create a little bear since I had created some other little teddy bears as charms. I thought maybe I should create a panda bear. I used translucent clay to create the white parts of the bear because I wanted it to have a sort of kind of jelly-like look to it as you get with translucent clay. And then the black parts of the teddy bear, I mixed the translucent clay with black clay, which gave it a little bit more of a shine than the regular black clay, but it gives it a little bit of a different look. So I created the head first, and then I worked on the body, added the arms, and then I did black patches around the eyes and black ears to give it that authentic panda look. I was really happy with the way it came out. Unfortunately, the camera doesn't pick up the eyes very well. They kind of just blend in with the black patches on the eyes, but he does have glass black eyes as well. This week I also created a morel mushroom. Morel season is coming around the corner where I live. I know in some places it's already here and people are finding all sorts of morels all over the place. For me it's just starting to pop up a little bit around me but I have not spotted any personally yet. If you don't know what a morel mushroom is, it's a very highly sought after wild mushroom that a lot of foragers love to find but it's kind of hard to find. They're always in certain areas, around certain trees, and you have to know just what to look for to find them. And this year I've made it my goal to find a morel mushroom, and I thought, what better way to start off this season by making a morel mushroom out of clay? I have already gone mushroom hunting a little bit for morel mushrooms, but I was not able to find anything. Again, it is a little early. Hopefully later in the season, in April, I will find some. It would be amazing if I could. I'm literally having dreams about finding mushrooms. That's how crazy it's been for me, thinking about mushrooms nonstop. I've never actually tried a morel mushroom, but I heard that they taste very good. They're in a lot of dishes. You just have to make sure you cook them very well. If you eat them raw, they could cause a lot of indigestion and could end you up in the hospital. So if you do find a morel mushroom, do not eat it raw. But they pretty much look like what I have created. If you are you know, walking around and you spot one that looks like the mushroom that I created out of clay, let me know in the comments. I would love to know about people's finding of mushrooms. I find it very exciting. Since it's spring now, the violets are starting to pop up in our backyard, so I thought I would make some violet lemonade. This is one of my favorite things to do in the springtime as I collect a bunch of violets and put them in a jar and I make lemonade out of it. So what you do is you collect all your violets, fill up the jar 
almost to the top with violets because you're just going to end up with the petals anyway so you're going to want a lot and then you're going to separate the petals from the stems and see you there you don't end up with as much as you collected and then put your petals in a strainer and wash them off just to make sure that there's no dirt or grime on them. And then put it back in your jar and pour some boiling water over those petals. I missed the jar a little bit at the beginning there, but I was not looking. I was looking at the phone instead of what I was doing, which don't do that. Look at what you're doing. And it creates this beautiful blue color of water. It almost looks like it's dyed, but it's not. It's extracting the colors from the violets. Now you can see all the petals are all white because it extracted all of that violet color and put it into the water. I always let it sit overnight to get that color as dark as you can. If the color of yours is kind of greenish, it means that you left the stem on or too much of the stem on, so it will have more of a greenish color, but that's okay if you want it to be that color. It's not as that violet color, but it will change a little bit when you add the lemon juice. You're gonna wanna add the simple syrup and then add the lemon, and the lemon is where the magic happens. It creates this beautiful pink color. I call it all natural pink lemonade with violets and it's so good. It's good for you and it's all natural. Down the road from my house, we have a little tiny library that I like to go to. I like to walk there and pick out a book I thought I needed a new book for the spring because all of my books are somehow all October themed. They're kind of spooky, they're kind of scary. So I thought maybe I should get a springtime book. And so I brought one of the books that I don't really plan on reading. I started reading it and wasn't very interested in it. So I brought it to the library to put in and then I ended up with Nature Girl. I'm excited to read it. I wanted to do a little unboxing of this little pumpkin light that I got. I'm gonna put it on my desk once it's all set up and ready. And I wanted to show it to you guys because I think it's the cutest thing. I got it from Luminated Crafts on Etsy. So if you want this, go check it out. The link is also in the description. And he has such cute little legs, and such a cute little face. And I love the lights that you can squish to turn them on. I just find that so satisfying. And he has three different brightnesses and also a timer. So if you were worried about leaving him on too long and the battery running out, you can set a timer and it'll go for 30 minutes and then turn off. He's rechargeable, so you just plug it in the USB in the back and charge it up and turn it on. just kind of relaxing. It was a little cold so we had a fire and then I turned on the projector downstairs and watched High Trainer Dragons because that's one of my favorite movies. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did please give it a like and please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We would love to have more friends join us and follow along our journey. Please come back next week and check out Newt's video and see what she's been up to.